Hey everyone, Nick from Resonix Sound Solutions here with another tech tip on the Audio Tech Fisher DSP PC tool. Uh, today we are going to be getting into importing an old tune from a different processor into your new updated sound system. You know, if you upgraded to something different and you want to import your old tune, uh, things can get a little tricky. Um, so what we have here is I'm in demo mode right now for a new Helix DSP Ultra S and I want to show you what happens really quick when we try to load a preset that was created for a different processor. In this case I'm going to be trying to load an old tune from my personal car which has the Brax DSP. So they have the same amount of channels. So it, in theory, it should, you know, you'd think, oh yeah, I don't see the problem, right? Uh, I'll show you what happens. Um, you know, here's, here's one of them. Um, and it looks like, oh, cool. Like it, it actually imported stuff. Um, if we pay attention to what's going on, we're on channel A, which is labeled front left high, which is correct for my car. But this is very clearly a mid-range driver. Uh, if we go to front right high, this is, very clearly a mid-base driver uh you know mid-range uh, this is also again clearly a mid-base driver and then a subwoofer and then another front subwoofer uh i don't even know what this is maybe that's a front subwoofer i i don't even know um i really wait yeah what the hell is this um there's no time alignment applied there's no phase adjustments applied there's it seems like there's inaccurate crossovers applied. Things just, yeah, these just aren't adding up. Um, this is not the tune for my car. You know, yeah, this is the EQ on a mid-range. This is the EQ. Uh, I don't know. This don't look right uh, because I don't have any driver in my system that has that requires a peak at 80 hertz. So again, like things look like oh wait, like at first glance, you know. Uh, this is what the tune is, but it's clearly not. So I'm going to show you the correct way to import your old tune into your new processor. So first, I'm just going to reset all this. Um, I'm going to turn on virtual channel processing again, just because that's how I do everything. Um, and what we can do at the end of the day, you are not able to import certain things. One thing is going to be uh, the input and output settings along with the input EQ. Unfortunately, those are going to have to be done manually. Thankfully, they're not too difficult. Um, input EQ can get a little bit much, but it's not like it has a ton of bands of EQ or you know crazy settings most of the time. And most of you watching this probably don't use this much so I'm betting most of you are just going to have to um, reconfigure your input and outputs which again is easy it's not the end of the world um, other things that you are not going to be able to import are I think the effects um, I think you're gonna have to reset those but again there's only so many effects that, who cares um, but the virtual channels and the output channels are all able to be imported um, and I will show you how we do that. Uh, it's very simple. So we're going to go to front channel A. We'll do this one first. We're going to right click on front left high, you know, on the channel A. And then we're going to go load import file. And I'm going to select the file that I want. And we can select a few different things here. Select source channel. What this does is we're going to pick which channel we want to use to import into channel A from the old tune. So the tune that's loaded here, which channel do we want to, uh, to load in, into the channel we have selected? Obviously I'm gonna select channel A because that's, you know, I'm going direct copy here. And we're gonna import the high pass filter, the low pass filter, the channel gain, the channel name, and the EQ. I'm actually not sure, uh, now that I think about it, I'm not sure if it imports signal delay or phase and polarity. I guess we will find out. Um, but another thing, so we can also import EQ and we can also start it at a certain number. So again, if you look at my previous videos, specifically the one on 
the configuration of the Helix conductor controller, you'll remember that we cannot use EQ band number two because the tone controls, if you're using the tone controls, uh, they use EQ band number two. So in those cases, we would wanna go up to EQ band. Hmm. Why does it, all right, it's not letting me go up, maybe because it's in demo mode, but also I already know that in this tune, I am starting from EQ band three anyways, so it'll be fine. So we're gonna click import and boom, you'll see it applied everything. Um, and yeah, it did not, it looks like it is not applying uh, phase, which I actually don't think there's any phase adjustments on this channel in my car, but it's not applying signal delay and it is not applying channel gain, even though it said it would. You know, it does show down here minus five and a half dB, but I guess you know maybe we have to do that manually. Maybe importing from certain processors into other processors, you know, have different bugs. You know, you got to remember, Audio Tech Fisher has over twenty something, maybe even thirty something processors. Um, there's lots of variations of hardware and lots of little differences between the softwares that you might not think of. And it would frankly just be unfair for us to expect everything to transfer perfectly from one to one. But uh, again, that's pretty much how it goes. Uh, another button, another little hotkey that we can do is instead of right clicking up here, we could just hit the I, the import button, and we have the same thing. Um, the tune is still loaded right here, so we don't have to go searching for it again. But now we're just gonna switch to, you know, I'll put B. And you know, we're gonna take note of the channel gain here because we're gonna wanna do that manually as we saw before in this specific case. Again, I don't know if this is for every case. And there we go. So we're gonna drop that to minus five. Again, we don't have any signal delay applied. I don't know why. Um, I am going to email the guys at Audio Tech Fisher as soon as I'm done recording this video and see if this can get implemented and if not, why. Um, I will update the description of this video with an explanation as to why it can't do this or update the description to reflect, hey, this was implemented in a certain software update. Um, so yeah, we can just, uh, you know, work our way, work our way down and it's pretty much, uh, pretty much it. Pretty straightforward. Um, on you know, ch processors with virtual channels, you can also import um, virtual channels. So this is a tune file that's from a processor without virtual channels. So let me see if uh, I think this one has, yeah, this one has virtual channels. So you can see, you know, virtual channel, we can also import vo virtual channels into this, virtual channel A, boom. You know, I don't know. Let me see if you can even import virtual channels into. Yeah, you can even import virtual channels <laughs> into into your main output. Not that you want to do that, but um, you know, again, just pay attention to exactly what you are importing. Um, but yeah, this is pretty much uh, pretty much it. It's really straightforward. Um, again, you know what? Let me see. That's still. See with this one, this is interesting. Let's uh, let's reset this. I want to take a look at something. Um, let's do. Let's turn that on again, and I want to import uh, that same tune file and do amp output A. I want to see if channel gain and any phase or timing actually gets imported with this different file that's not from a Brax DSP. This one is. I think this is from a M6 DSP amplifier or an M4. I think that's what it's from, from a customer of mine. So it did not import. Oh wait, it did. It took a second. That was weird. You saw me click back and forth. You know what, let's do this oh, again. Uh, that's very interesting. So, you know, let's right click, you know, let's do amp output A. Let's take note that channel gain for this 
amp output is two and a half dB. Import it, and we will see that channel gain is at zero. It looks like it didn't import. We switch to another channel, and we go back. It looks like it was applied. So that's uh, that's an interesting little bug. Um, I will report that to Audio Tech Fisher as well uh, in the same email. But as we can see, like I said, you know, different processors are going to do different things because they have different hardwares, different softwares. Even though it's all working in the same software, there's just different ways that each one operates. And some of these differences are so small that, you know, your average person or even your not average person would never even notice. But, you know, damn well behind the, the curtain, there are definitely differences going on. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much it. Relatively straightforward. And uh, yeah, if you are looking for any AudioTech Fisher, Helix, Brax, Match, um, DSPs, amplifiers, or any other products that they offer, feel free to reach out. Uh, Resonix Sound Solutions is now the sole internet dealer for AudioTech Fisher products in the United States. Um, and we can also help you find a local dealer if you have one. Um, so yeah, feel free to reach out if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, or comment below, subscribe. There's always going to be more content coming and thank you for watching. Have a good one.